What about just Toomey Mansion, that bipartisan push for universal background checks? Here to debate that is National Justice Director for his Senator uh, Bernie Sanders and 2016 campaign manager Teslin Figueroa. And she's a and Republican strategist and author of this new book called Fire Them Now, Philip Stutz. Uh, welcome to both of you. Philip, let's start with you. Uh, sure. A lot of people watched on Wednesday were totally riveted to the legitimate debate between two sides. It was so civil. I found it fascinating. No one really knew exactly what the president was going to sign on to. Is Senator right. Schumer upping the ante in a way you're comfortable with? Well, I mean, I, let me just start out and say this, Brian. Uh, I live in the state of Florida. I have a five-year-old daughter that will go to public school next year. This issue is really important to me. And we saw what uh, Chuck Schumer came out with yesterday, but it feels more like a Band-Aid than fixing uh, the wound and the problem. Look, we have 270 million guns in this country. 323 million people live in this country. And so, look, I, I'm all for having some gun control debate, but the fact is is that we know that the, park, or that the Parkland shooting could have been avoided if the police had just stopped this ahead of time, if the police had, after 20 visits, uh, with, this, with the Cruz uh, kid that they, that they could have prevented this. We also know there's a, health a broken health care system and the fact that th this child, be part of among it. all the other Phil, shooters, I hear you. It's be part uh, have of it. family problems. Uh, it's got to be part of it, and we do know this. I, I have 911 calls, we all heard it, Teslin, of neighbors trying to call in Nicholas Cruz as a dangerous lunatic, and the cops showing up saying, I can't do anything to stop it. So this debate needs to be holistic, where are we going with it? What's, what's real? What's real in terms of an accomplishment here? Well, you know, I'll tell you what's real. Let me first start off by saying I'm an M60, former M60 gunner uh, in the Air Force Reserve, so that is the King Kong of assault weapons. So I do have a, you know, a hard time trying to understand why civilians need military-style weapons on the street. Um, I, too, lived in Florida for about 10 years, and so when you look at Florida and look at what it is that they're looking for, they have voted for the people that they want to put in place, and the people that they put in place are right. Republicans who uh, seem to believe that an assault weapon uh, ha counters the Second Amendment. So what it really comes down to this. All of this is just really just a bunch of talk, to be quite honest with me. If people want to ban weapons, then first they have to ban people at the box. Who are they actually putting in place that will vote their interests, whether that is Orlando, whether that is Parkland? When we look at both of those issues, both of those individuals bought those assault weapons legally. So whether we have the issue with Parkland right. about police it, who could not have stopped it, I believe that criminals will do what criminals do. We can put a stop sign up, but that's not going to stop people from running a stop sign. But government has to take some type of responsibility and put some type of regulation in place that does not counter the Second Amendment right. And it's a good point because uh, the Tesla makes, but Phil, uh, one of the three of his guns were illegal. So if he didn't get his legal gun that he got because he passed a background check mysteriously, he would use one of his illegal guns and maybe less died. That would be awesome. But at the same time, the, the, the crime still happens. So what, what is realistic? Toomey Mansion, universal background checks, right. where everything would come up no matter what state you're in, including internet sales. How about that? And person to person sales. Can we get on the same page with that? Well, I, you know, when you have Chuck Schumer coming out yesterday and saying he wants to do something in a bipartisan manner and then he bashes the NRA, that tells me he's playing political games. And so I think there can be, done, uh, can be a bipartisan bill in some way, form or fashion, because the president is going to be involved. And last night, the president met with the NRA. I think that's a good step. I think they're trying to get on the same page, and I hope he can get with the Senate and they can figure out solutions that are less of a Band-Aid and more of a fix of what our society needs, which is not necessarily just gun control, but to fix the health care system, the family value system. And frankly, if we, if we want the federal government more involved, the federal government couldn't even stop this in the first place. And that's what worries me. And Teslin, we saw, I saw, we saw government in action. Like it or not, we saw people calling each other by their first names in separate parties. And I want to see this continue. However, we need to see results from these meetings, right, Teslin? So where do, right. where, what do we hope happens in the next two and a half weeks? Well, I mean, to me, yeah, we saw people calling people by his first name. I saw a good dog and pony show. You know, at the end of the day, people are going to have to ban people at the box. You know, if they're interested in changing the laws in Florida or changing the laws around this country, it really does come down to uh, in, in voting in people who were there before. Even President Trump said, what were you guys doing before? You know, how did what, what was exactly. the solution before? It's the same rhetoric over and over, year over year, with the same result, which is usually nothing. So you're not optimistic we're going to get everything done even after the horror of February 14th? 
No, I wouldn't. Uh, I would have thought that the horror with Columbine. I would have thought that the horror with the Orlando Pulse shooting. I actually worked that case right. as a crisis management, a senior crisis management on that case. So I would have thought that they would have done a change before. But the, the Republican Party has made it clear, right. you know. So either Florida, who voted in the, these these individuals, Mark Rubio, uh, either they want somebody new or they don't. I mean, it's just really right. that simple. The rest of it is just a dog and pony show, to be quite honest. Uh, Marco Rubio is not the problem. I mean, there are a lot of Democrats that uh, like oh, Joe Manchin pro gun. So I, I think they are going to get something done, Phil. I'm optimistic. Optimistic because yeah. this president, Me too. there's not a person who believes that this president wants to take your gun away. That's the difference. And maybe they'll trust more and understand uh, something could actually get done without an, ult uh, an ulterior motive. Uh, Phil and Teslin, great, great debate. Thanks so much. I guess we'll see. Thank you. Thank right. you. I hope I'm right. <laughs>